their output. So what is cardiac output? It is the amount of blood which is pumped out from the heart ventricular systole that is cardiac output so you will define cardiac output as the amount of blood which is pumped out from the heart per ventricular contraction that is cardiac output and now next you have stroke volume stroke volume will define as the volume of blood ejected per B that is stroke volume. So when you want to calculate cardiac output it is equal to stroke volume multiplied by heart rate. Normally the stroke volume is 70 ml multiplied by the heart rate. What is the normal heart rate? We will take 70. So you will get around nearly 4900 ml per minute. So the cardiac output approximately we will get as 5 liters per minute. This is the cardiac output. So that is the volume of blood which is ejected from the heart. And this also gives the cardiac index. That is cardiac output divided by the body surface area. And the normal value you will get 3.2 liters per minute. Okay, clear? Yeah. So, this is what is cardiac output. So, cardiac output is going to be considered as one of the important factor in the functioning of cardiovascular system. The ejection fraction in most of the cardiovascular abnormalities, we will measure the ejection fraction, which is going to give the condition of the ventricular systole, whether the ejection fraction is good or low or normal, then that is going to make us to consider how the cardiac cycle is happening. Because this cardiac cycle, it is the basis of function of the heart. If anything goes wrong in the cardiac cycle, that results in various clinical conditions. Okay, clear? So now we have to consider the end of cardiac cycle. The main thing which we want to consider is the cardiac output. So this cardiac output is also considered as one of the important parameter to be considered when you are talking with the cardiac abnormalities. So what are all the factors? which is going to help in maintaining the cardiac output. If there is any abnormality in those factors, it will directly have the reflection in the cardiac output. Okay, clear? Is it audible? Yes? So, now first we will see the factors. <coughs> Maintaining cardiac output. The four most important factor and the first one is venous. Is this visible? Yes. Venous return. What is venous return? 
we have seen in the cardiac cycle what is venous return what it is going to determine first what is venous return that is the amount of blood which is entering into the atrium especially the right atrium from the superior and the inferior vena cava so this venous blood which is coming back to the heart that is going to make us to determine the cardiac output if there is any abnormality in venous drainage then the amount of blood entering the atrium will not be normal that will have the reflection in the cardiac output because what is cardiac output whatever the atrium is giving blood to the ventricles that blood is the that volume of blood given by the atrium is going to enter into the systemic circulation if the atrium is not getting enough blood normal required amount of blood is not given by the atrium that will not give you the normal cardiac output so the atrium either it may be from the either it may be from the pulmonary vein or superior inferior vena cava both and majorly we will consider pulmonary vein when you talk about the ejection fraction the left side of the ventricle is mainly involved in the systemic circulation if the cardiac output is less in the left side even right side is also important but more important you will consider systemic circulation okay so if the pulmonary vein is not giving enough amount of blood it may be the reflection of any pulmonary abnormalities or if the superior and inferior vena cava is not giving enough amount of blood it indicates that reflection in the venous return so this venous return is going to be considered as one of the most important factor to maintain the cardiac output for example if the body fluid is less this body fluid is going to show the reflection in the blood volume so if the blood volume is low the venous supply the venous drainage will also be low so immediately what will happen less of cardiac output less of blood pressure hypotension and its symptoms will be seen okay so all these parameters is being determined by the venous return if a person is getting severe dehydration the cause may be of anything severe dehydration then body fluid is less then you will have decrease in the blood volume volume of blood decreased that will have reflection in the venous return then immediately cardiac output is less blood pressure is less so just venous return it is the venous return back to the heart but it is holding a major role in maintaining the cardiac function okay and the second one from the venous return what are all the factors which is involved in maintaining the venous return so we have seen the importance of venous return and how this venous return is maintained since the venous return is having its importance it should be maintained by some other sub factors so what are they the venous return which is maintained by the first one is intrathoracic pressure as the name where you will find this pressure where you will find this intrathoracic pressure in the respiratory pump what is intrathoracic pressure the pressure between the pleural space which is also called as intrathoracic space what is pleura that is the outer covering of the lungs 
So you have two layers of pleura, visceral and parietal. In detail, we will see in the afternoon respiratory physiology. Okay. So that space is maintaining a pressure. It is also called as intrathoracic space. And the pressure which is maintained in the intrathoracic space is also called as intrathoracic pressure. Okay. So how this intrathoracic pressure is going to be involved in the venous return is we all know the location of the heart. You have the lungs and in the mediastinum we have the heart. Consider this as my heart. Okay, clear? So the intrathoracic space that is the outer covering. This space is called as the intrathoracic space. And this is going to be maintaining a pressure, intrathoracic pressure. And since this is close to the heart, this intrathoracic pressure will help in bringing the venous blood back, especially from the lower parts of the body. Because from the upper parts of the body, whatever blood is given by the superior vena cava, it is towards the gravity. So it will easily come into the superior vena cava. But whatever the venous drainage given by the inferior vena cava, it is from the lower parts of the body. So the venous flow should be against the gravity. It means it needs some force to bring the blood back to the heart against the gravity. It is traveling against the gravity. So if anything is moving against, you need energy. Here the energy is given in the form of intrathoracic pressure. How this intrathoracic pressure is going to exert the energy? It is by maintaining the negative pressure. This intrathoracic pressure will always remain negative. In the sense, it will be always negative both during inspiration, expiration and that resting stage. Since it is maintaining its value as a negative pressure, if the negative pressure is there, then it will have the suction force. As we have seen in the cardiac cycle, during isovolumetric contraction phase, so during relaxation phase, the ventricles is a closed chamber which is empty and it is exerting a negativity which pulls the attraction from the blood. So it is having the suction force which makes the fast rapid uh, filling phase is going to happening. In the same way, since the intra intrathoracic pressure is maintaining its value always negative both during inspiration as well as during expiration, it will continuously exert a suction force especially for the inferior vena cava to bring back the blood from the lower parts of the body to the heart. Okay, so this intrathoracic pressure, if it goes abnormal in case of pulmonary diseases, if the pleural space, pleural effusion, the space between the pleura filled with the air instead of the fluid, you term it as pleural effusion that will disturb the intrathoracic pressure that will have the reflection in disturbing the venous return. Then the cardiac output decreases, blood pressure decreases, everything will happen. So that is what is venous return maintained by the intrathoracic pressure. And second one is the venomotor tone. As the name venomotor tone, it is the tension which is maintained in the blood vessels. Okay, so this tension exerts a force, the contraction, constriction of the vessel wall. It makes the intrathoracic pressure, the venous return to be maintained in its condition. <clears throat> and third one is blood volume. As we have already seen, during dehydration or any 
loss of body fluids, blood volume is decreased. If there is any trauma, severe hemorrhage, loss of blood volume, that will have the reflection in disturbing or reducing the venous return, which will disturb the cardiac output. And the fourth one is the muscle pump. What is the role of the muscle pump in the sense? Mainly the skeletal muscle contraction. When there is excessive exercise, the skeletal muscles needs enormous amount of energy that is being given by the myoglobin. The heme which is present in the skeletal muscles, you call it as myoglobin which supplies oxygen to the skeletal muscles. So, if there is sternus exercise, severe exercise, the muscle needs more and more of energy to do the task. So, what happens immediately? There is excessive of muscle pump is working out. So, that also disturbs the venous return because this makes all the blood to enter into the muscles rather than the circulation. Because muscle needs more and more of oxygen. Here the demand of oxygen given by the muscles makes more amount of blood to enter into the muscles rather than the systemic circulation. So that decreases the venous return. Okay. So these are the factors which is maintaining the venous return. And second thing we will see is in maintaining cardiac output is the force of heart and now all the factors which is required for the venous return is normal but the cardiac muscle the myometrium of the cardiac muscle is not maintaining its contractility it is one of the property of the cardiac muscle it is not contracting normally it is not contracting to the required level then even though the venous return is normal and all the factors which is maintaining the venous return is normal but the cardiac muscle is having some abnormality the myometrium of the cardiac muscle is not doing its function properly it may be the any cause whether the nerve supplying the myometrium is not good or the blood supply to the myometrium is not good. The cause may be of anything or if there is any infectious conditions, thickening of the myometrium, so many causes, whatever may be. So here what happens, the blood volume is normal, intrathoracic pressure is normal and there is no excess of exercise, no need of muscle pump to work out in enormous level motor turn is normal. So overall cardiac the venous return is normal. But the blood is still pooling inside the ventricles. Because it is not giving its contraction to the required level. The force of contraction is defective. So that also makes to the cardiac output to get decreased. Okay, clear? So, what are the most important conditions which makes the force of contraction to be decreased in case of dilated cardiomyopathy? There is thickening in the walls of the ventricles. When the walls of the ventricles is thickened, even though if it contracts, because of the thickness in the muscle, it will not give the ejection fraction to the normal level. Okay, and other conditions like endocarditis, the valvular defect will be there. The semilunar valves may not open properly, but it is fully filled with the required amount of blood. But the ventricular contraction is not taking properly. So that makes the one of the factor to maintain the cardiac output. And third one is... Heart rate. What is heart rate? The rhythmicity. It is the property given by the rhythmicity. The rhythmicity, autorhythmicity, which is generated by the junctional tissues of the heart. SA node is not normal. What is the amount of uh, 
contraction given by the SA node? 72, 80. So if the SA node is defective, AV node will be the one which is now going to act as a pacemaker in the absence of defective SA node. But it will give contractions, it will give the electrical impulse to the lesser level when compared to the SA node. So what happens? You need to make the ventricles contract nearly 70 times per minute. Only then you will get the cardiac output to the normal level. Instead of 70 times, it is giving only 40 times of contraction because of the AV node. So automatically cardiac output decreases. So that is how the heart rate is making a role in maintaining the cardiac output. Okay. And the last one is peripheral resistance. What is meant by peripheral resistance? The peripheral resistance is the resistance which is maintained in the blood vessels. So this peripheral resistance is very, very important in maintaining the blood pressure. And this is having its reflection in the cardiac output. If the peripheral resistance increases, blood pressure increases. That is also increasing the cardiac output. So this is how the factors maintaining the cardiac output. So we have majorly four important factors which is maintaining the cardiac output. The first one is venous return and the second one is force of heart and the third one is the heart rate. And finally, the peripheral resistance. And you should know about some methods. Just know the names of those methods. How to measure this cardiac output. So, the measuring of cardiac output. We have two different type of methods. Direct method. Indirect method. So under direct method, you have cardiometer and flow meter. And in indirect method, you have Dye dilution method thermodilution method electromagnetic flow meter and Doppler echocardiogram. So these are few methods which is being used to measure the cardiac output. Okay. Clear? Copy down. Finish? So next what we are going to see is heart sounds. For heart sounds, you make a table. There are four different types of heart sounds. Okay. So, you make a table which consists of So now we will see the differences between 
four types of answers. First half sum, second, third, and fourth. First, we will finish the description, then I will explain in relation with the cardiac cycle. The first one is cause of the heart sound. Closure of AV back. And second heart sound is due to the closure of semilunar valve. Is this clear? Whatever I am writing? Yes? And second one, nature of the heart sounds. It, is, it resembles the spoken word love. If you say love vocally, so that is how you will hear the first heart song. And second one is it resembles dub. And on auscultation, it is best heard at apical areas of the heart and at the level of tricuspid valve. And second heart sound is heard best at the at the basal areas at the origin of aortic and pulmonary valve. Okay. Next. Character of the first heart sound. It is very, very, very deeper in its pitch and longer in its nature and it is like booming sound and the character of second heart sound will be higher pitch and it is very shorter duration and it is like a snapping sound okay if you just describe the nature it is very deep in case of first heart sound, but it is higher in pitch in case of second heart sound. And the duration is only 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.17 seconds. And in case of second heart sound, it is 0 0.102, 0 0.14 seconds. Almost similar of duration with the first heart sound. And the sixth one is frequency. The number of frequencies. It is 25 to 45 per second. And the second heart sound is 50 per second. And the most important and the last one is which move moment or which phase of cardiac cycle is producing this heart sound. That is, any idea when the first heart sound is happening in the cardiac cycle? During? What is first heart sound due to the closure of? Closure of 
AV valve. In which phase of the cardiac cycle the AV valve is closed? Is the atrial systole, ventricular systole or ventricular diastole? Closure of AV valve. During ventricular systole. In ventricular systole, which specific subface? When the ventricle is remaining as a closed chamber, fully filled with the heart, which is building up higher and higher of pressure. During the closed chamber of the ventricles, during ventricular systole, it is due to turn your phages back. That is why the question is being asked. Isovolumetric? Contraction phase during isovolumetric contraction phase. So this is very, very, very important. The moment of cardiac cycle which is giving rise to the first heart sound. It is during isovolumetric contraction phase of the ventricular systole, which is due to the closure of AV valve. Apart from all the other features, these two features is very, very, very important to be remembered always. Okay, so the first heart sound is during isovolumetric contraction phase. That is the phase where the ventricle is remaining as a closed chamber, fully filled with the heart blood and it is building excessive pressure inside the ventricles. The ventricle is preparing to eject the blood. Okay, so that is due to the closure of AV valve. Yeah, and the next, when is the second heart sound produced? It is due to the cause of closure of what valve? Semilunar valve. When the semilunar valve is closed? When is the closure of semilunar valve taking place? After the ventricular systole. In order to prevent the reversal flow, backflow of blood from the iota and pulmonary artery into the ventricles. The semilunar valve is closed. That is taking place at the end of ventricular systole after the ejection and that is also the beginning of ventricular diastole so you term it as a protodiastolic period okay so that is at the beginning and During initial isovolumetric relaxation phase. This beginning is what you term it as protodiastolic period. Okay. So remember other names the beginning of ventricular diastole. It is protodiastolic period where it is preparing to perform the relaxation process. Once when the blood is ejected out from the ventricles, without the closure of semilunar valve, if the ventricles is relaxed, then immediately the backflow of blood will take place. So before the beginning of the relaxation, it is preparing itself by closing the semilunar valve that prevents the backflow of blood into the ventricles. So that closure of semilunar valve is producing a sound that is second heart sound. So this is the differences between first and heart, second heart sound which can be auscultated through the stethoscope. And we will also see the third and the fourth heart sounds. So third and the fourth heart sound, the character
it is very very low pitched in its character and only 30 percentage of the population it is audible and you can write it down in auscultation it can be audible only in 30 percentage of normal population and this is due to what i said in cardiac cycle s3 third heart sound when during the blood which is hitting the walls of the ventricles that is during rapid filling phase you write it down in this moment rapid filling phase of ventricular diastole okay and the frequency is very less only 3 to 4 per seconds and the duration is only less than 0 0.1 seconds okay and you will not say how the third heart sound is by vocally okay clear and then next one is there is no any specific event like closing or opening so you cannot determine that for the third heart sound and fourth heart sound it is also low pitch and this is audible not by auscultation okay it is only audible by the phonocardiogram phonocardiogram it is a recording of the heart sounds okay so only by that method you will hear the third heart sound not in all the cases it is audible those who are having myocardial infarction and heart failure so the hearing of fourth heart sound is considered to be abnormal okay and this is followed by the rapid filling phase in the ventricular diastole you will have slow filling phase so that slow filling phase is the moment where the cardiac cycle is giving the fourth heart sound okay so this is what is the major differences in the heart sounds and if you want to get the graphical representation of phonocardiogram in case of first, first heart sound it will be like this this is how the frequency is nearly 25 to 45 per second okay and then it is very deeper in its pitch so you will have the representations like this in the phonocardiogram of the first heart sound in case of second heart sound higher pitch but it is of 50 seconds duration so you will have higher pitch like this in the second heart sound because see in case of first heart sound it is only nearly 25 frequencies so you have like this but in case of second heart sound 50 seconds uh, 50 per seconds you will have so it is of very close frequencies but in case of third heart sound only three to four per second 
and it is very low pitched even you cannot see the representation you will get the graph like this and then in case of uh, fifth heart sound you will never fourth heart sound you will never record at all you cannot see any pitching in this fourth heart sounds this is how you will get the graphical representation in the phonocardiogram and normally by stethoscope first and second heart sounds can be heard okay the first heart sound is best heard at the apex of the heart and at the origin of uh, the location of tricuspid valve the second heart sound is best heard at the basal areas of the ventricles and at the beginning of aorta and the pulmonary valve so this is the two locations where the second heart sound is heard and third heart sound can be heard in the stethoscope those who are having very thin chest walls but it is very rare only in 30 percentage of the population you can hear the third heart sound by stethoscope and commonly through the phonocardiogram you can hear the third and fourth heart sounds fourth heart sound can never be heard by the stethoscope it is very 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 rare and the fourth heart sound is only recorded in the persons having abnormalities like heart failure or myocardial infarction or any other heart failure related conditions okay clear